welcome back to Label, the brand in the making. I'm Ariel. And I'm John. And today we're going to talk about how to brand oneself. Yay, branding, my favorite. And <laughs> it's crazy because you would think that a lot of companies know how to brand themselves, but actuality, they mostly focus on the product and they do about branding, which is crazy to me. I mean, well, because you why just not? Don't, you don't think about it. True. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. Sometimes it's kind of hard to like think of what makes you stand out compared to the others and like the other brands that are out there because everyone's everyone's producing the same product everyone's doing the same type of maybe having like a different like i would say like maybe there are differences to the product but in a sense it's like what's one shirt to another shirt so it's like all about the branding and like how you can stand out amongst the crowd of different shirts that are out there but yet still be similar in ways and we'll explain that so Mm -hmm. first you have to figure out like what your product is and then kind of go from there yeah once you figure that out that's that's you're basically a shoe in for like just um getting started with the process of acquiring customers getting to you know customers getting to know your brand getting to know what you have to offer and it's that's i think creating the product is just the biggest step of all. So once you get to that point, then you can start branding and then you can start creating different touch points that make you unique. Um, and I, I, there's this quote that I always, well, not a quote, but it's like something that someone said that you can produce, I don't know, toilet paper, right? Everyone needs toilet paper. What's one toilet paper brand like Charmin to another? It's the branding that makes you unique compared to like a Charmin or like, I don't know, the generic brands that are out there that can be bought in bulk at um, Costco or things like that. So, And it's funny that you said toilet paper because I know 2020 toilet paper was like the big thing yeah. of the year. Yeah. And um, there was, I saw online, like toilet paper wrapped in, you know, paper. Mm-hmm. And it was colorful and had a print around it. Wait, and I was, toilet paper wrapped in paper? Yeah, just like a single roll that's oh, kind of wrapped in paper yeah, 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 yeah. to okay. make sure it's safe from other things before mm-hmm. you use it. Mm-hmm. But it had like these colorful prints on it. I was like... Oh, really? That's so cool. You would never see it. There's really no point to this. And I was like, well. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I mean, it's it's all, it's all even about how they kind of, because was it like branded like to their own type, like to their own branding or like whatever company? Honestly, I didn't even read what they said about it. I was <laughs> just, just like, was that's pretty. <laughs> Well, it's bad, but well, yeah, well, that worked. It did work because it, it caused you to buy something. It caused you to, or it caused you to buy from whatever brand it was, and to maybe look for more of that same thing in terms of toilet paper. Who would have thought colorful toilet paper? I mean, the toilet paper itself wasn't colorful. It's was just the wrapping around. Oh, it. just the wrapping around it. So the toilet paper, it wasn't even that great. It was just the wrapping. I don't know. I didn't even get that far. I was like, "That's cool." And I was like, "Okay, what am I doing?" I can't. I can't. I know it's bad. So, yeah. So we're gonna get a little bit into like branding, how, um, what companies are doing, what you should do, what maybe you want to implement into your own branding when it comes to your company or your business to kind of make you stand out from the crowd. Because, you know, now that 20, now that we're in 20, well, we're in the end of 2020. Thank God. And like a lot of, I feel like 2020, a lot of brands have been coming out because it's like, I lost my job or I'm on furlough or whatever the case may be. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start my own thing. I don't need to work for nobody. I want to create my own thing. <laughs> well, that- you probably won't be able to work for anyone because <laughs> that's <it's> true. true. <laughs> that's true. So it's like a lot of companies are out there or a lot of people are out there wanting to create their own brand and they don't know how to brand themselves when there's a bunch of crap in the market. So, and what I mean, and I mean that very, very nicely. I don't mean like your your things crap or whatever's, you know, I just mean in yeah. like crap as in like there's a lot of things out there that you probably don't need, but we just buy anyways. Um, so w- what would you think is the first step when it comes to branding um, your business, Ariel? Well, I think first you need to figure out what you're going to do. So mm-hmm. we're going to talk in terms of fashion, but I feel like any person who's starting their own company, whatever it may be, can take like little things of what we say and apply it to them. Exactly. But so for fashion, are you fast fashion, bridge, which is usually contemporary or designer or couture, Mm -hmm. but usually designer, which is luxury and couture kind of fall in the same. Yeah. That's the, that's the hard thing because they always like get mingled in together. So it's like, are you designer? Are you couture? Are you luxury? It's like, I, I just call it luxury. It's all luxury. Even if it's from like, I don't know, a thousand to like. Well, yeah, that's luxury. But I mean, 
the contemporary brands, some people may consider that luxury, but the way that you brand it and advertise it, it wouldn't be the same as True. designer. Okay. That makes sense. There's like a step. And then, um, two is if you are naming the company after you, mm -hmm. if you're not, then you really don't. I mean, you could just brand it according to, um, the product, right. but if your, your name is behind it, you need to represent you as the company. Yes. So example, Ariel's brand is Ariel V. Campbell. No, Ariel Campbell. Oh, it's just Ariel Campbell? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's the Instagram thing. I kind of gross you. <laughs> so her brand is Ariel Campbell. So she has to represent, she has to be the personification, big word, I know, the personification <laughs> of her brand, Ariel Campbell, and what that means. Yes. So she's creating things or she's creating fashion that essentially she would wear. It's just similar to like Victoria Beckham where she creates fashion that she would essentially wear. But she knows that there are customers that follow her aesthetic or that like her aesthetic or that want to dress like her. So she has to represent that brand or she has to represent that idea or that persona or that persona in order to attract those customers. Yeah. So it's all about either like the aesthetic or it could just be like um, the aesthetic of the designs or it can be like the, um, the messaging or it could even just be like the colors, like the colors make a huge difference when it comes to like colors, meaning like, the branding colors. So, like, I know your colors are like. Do you do you have black and white? Black I and mean, white. it's just like every other. Every other. Logo, but I mean, I can make it different colors later mm -hmm. on. But for right now, it's black just and white. Black and white. Like with even simple. with Dior, their colors, it's like a navy, like a deep navy blue. Like they did a whole collection when um, the new creative director first started out, and it was like all navy blue, like and you know all that stuff. And then they have their own monogram. I know you have some somewhat of a monogram. Not yet, because they say, oh, when you first start out as a designer they tell you not to use your name and logo mm. because people don't know who you are yet right and then it, i feel like it's kind of weird it's kind of <laughs> conceited just to be like my name is on everything right, 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 so right. actually what i did in this collection mm -hmm. is i i did mermaid soup oh so it's yeah, yeah technically my name but mm. it's not and it's just a play on how people would always say oh my god like the mermaid or oh right. my god like the suit it's like yes i get it if you guys didn't get it mermaid soup ariel the Campbell. little mermaid and then Campbell soup Ta -da! see genius genius <laughs> branding right there branding 101 but i also think like um i also think like the sometimes when it comes to like branding a lot of people miss those steps and you know they think like oh you know my product is good enough that so it should be fine but no, in actuality, like your, you know, how you brand yourself and how you present yourself to the market, to the world is really important. So with Ariel having the mermaid soup, you know, idea, also like the black and white, um, and just her herself personifying like what she wants her label to look like and how to represent it to the world. That's those things are very, very important, um, especially when, you know. Especially when people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Yes. And then I also want to say, too, when you rep, like when it's my name and mm -hmm. I have to represent the brand, what I do outside of work still represents the brand. Exactly. And I think people will tend to forget that. So like mm -hmm. like John Galliano, for example, Ooh, when he did his anti-Semitic <laughs> remark and he got kicked out of Dior, like he was representing Dior, even though his name was not there, mm -hmm. he represented. And I think even his label was... I don't know what happened with that. But I mean, again, it represents you as a brand. So you have to be careful of what yeah, you're doing. You definitely have to be careful. It's like if, if there's a scandal between like Victoria Beckham and whatever, like it'll affect her it brand. It'll affect her brand. People will not buy it as much. No. You know, so it's all about, and it, it in a sense, you're kind of like, I was, I was reading this article, right? And it was like talking about how there's a celebrity designer, either you're a celebrity turned designer or a designer turned celebrity or just a uh, influencer turned designer. And they're talking about how like Rihanna, who, you know, we talked about Rihanna a little bit last week, but how Rihanna, she created her own like consumer goods empire. She has a skincare line. She has a cosmetics line. She has a lingerie line. Now she has a uh, ready to wear fashion line and how she is a representative of like that entire collection like everything from the colors to the aesthetic to the videos to the music is her her 
like even if you don't know her personality or know her as a person like you can tell like okay this is her like you can see her so i always wondered how if someone were to create like a collection that they wanted that that create something that they don't want it to be associated to them personally how would they be able to do that do you think that's like a possibility because essentially you're using your own ideas and it's something that you like aesthetically yourself so wouldn't that essentially be an extension of who you are but not necessarily who you are yeah i think you could do that if you stay out of like the limelight true and like because i'm gonna be honest i don't know who designs for a lot of these brands Mm -hmm. and even when you look at what they're wearing you're kind of like right really right like I love Sarah Burton Mm -hmm. and I love Alexander McQueen. But Mm -hmm. when you see what she wears out of the runway shows, you're just like, this isn't you. Like, this doesn't even look like you. I mean, I know you're designing for Alexander McQueen. Yeah. Like, and it's so funny you mentioned that because like you hardly hear anything about her. You don't, you don't really. And the thing is, she was a pivotal person in the whole, like when Alexander like was alive, she was, I think her, his like number one or number two or something. Like she was his assistant, right? I thought she started as an intern. She started as an intern, but then as the brand grew, she, before he died, she was like the assistant or she was something. Or like, no, before she, before Alexander, Lee Alexander, you know, unfortunately passed away in 2010. He, his, I guess his design director was Sarah. And she kind of knew everything that he was doing in terms of, like, the techniques and, like, his... She knew his brain. So it was interesting to kind of see how she kind of took the realm or took the role of, like, creative director for Alexander McQueen, the brand. And then it's kind of, like, it's the same. It's basically what he would have created. It's not as much... It's not as, like... It's never the same. It's never the same, but it's not as, like extravagant as it used to be no and it's the same thing every time like a little element of for the last step like the last collection it's the same but anyways we're not getting into that Bye. we're talking about branding <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay so i wanted to get into like what how do you pick your different touch points or different elements of creating your brand so like from the colors to the fonts to the messaging like what do you what do you do since you are a designer who's creating her own brand what do you what are things have you done to, in order to get to that point well again you need to figure out what you're trying to sell okay. so if i'm doing like let's say fun loving like mm-hmm. bohemian i'm going to do like bubble letters for my name and make it bright and colorful but right. if i'm doing luxury i'm keeping it very simple okay and so that's why it's like black and white now. But I mean, again, if I become more famous and you guys buy my stuff, okay, um, then I can put like what Dior did and like <laughs> balloon my name everywhere, or literally put like a mermaid on a can of soup and put it up. I mean, just have fun with it. Mm-hmm. But again, like, so you it think? Depends. So you think because you think when it's like more luxury based, it should be simplified. Simple. Because are, are you going to spend? Three thousand dollars on a dress when in the back the label is colorful and bubble letters. Okay, I see your point. You're gonna be like, is that handmade? I mean, did somebody like somebody's grandma make that? Like, but what if it's like cute and it's like kind of unique? But again, that's the branding. If a tag looks right. like it was made from Joanne's fabric, ah. <laughs> make no offense, but again, mm-hmm. you're not gonna spend three thousand dollars on something that was made from Joanne's fabric. That's true. Yeah. And if it I looks agree. like that, it depends on how it's presented. If you're presenting these tags and the label and the packaging as if like you crafted it at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So with with that, so it's you so it's the ta- the hang tags, or not the, the hang tags, the labels, the labels, and the packaging are like the important things when it comes to like branding in general. So to go into that a little bit, what do you think kind of sets brands apart, like in terms of like materials? Like what does the what does that created a visualization of what that looks like? Like is it? When it comes to like the tags, the labels, and the box, creative visualization. On so that. what I want to say, so when you buy fast fashion online, mm-hmm. you're going to get it in a plastic little bag and it's going to be thrown on your doorstep and you're going to open it up. It's going to be wrinkled it's like this and you pull it out and it's like a dress, mm-hmm. but it looks like e- even the person packaging it didn't care. Right. They just threw it in and they're like, here you go. Here's your $10 
dress. Right. Now, if you're going into what you're selling, like how do you package it? So I have a cardboard box that I put all the product in. It's all the product is themed. It's not in a bag. I may put in like, I may, if I have an extra like um, hanger, I may put in the hanger and then put it in like a, like a plastic uh, PV, PEV um, garment bag and then put it in and then try to fold it and put it in the mm-hmm. box with tissue paper. Um, and that would be like branded tissue paper. So it would have like either, right now I don't have that, but I will in the future. Because it's expensive. It's expensive. Like you, buying tissue paper, um, and when I mean by tissue paper, it's like those wrappable tissue papers that you see in like those boxes or in like a bag or something like a gift bag. Um, so you can get branded, you can create branded tissue papers with this company called No Issue, which is kind of, it's cute. But <laughs> um, they make custom tissue um, paper. You can have your name branded diagonally or across, and it's just like your name and your colors, and you can it, you can do all the works with it. And um, so that's one of the ways that I would do it, as well as having like a, you know putting in like a a business card or a postcard, like a little note saying thank you for shopping, whatever the case may be. Just those little small details will create this like experience. So imagine like with Apple, you know how like Apple they. In their products, you have like a full on experience when you're opening Mm -hmm. the phones or you're opening the i the headphones. Like it's really cool how like it's hard to open. Don't get me wrong, but But it's it's like unwrapping a gift. Exactly, exactly. So it's similar to that. Obviously, not as tech or as fancy as that, but like even getting a box that even getting like a package from one of your favorite brands that has the smell of the brand, like one of their favorite, one of their like popular fragrances, or even like having the tissue paper that has like the brand name or even like the ribbon, like Chanel, they do, they tie up their packages really, really neatly and really, really creatively. And then they put the flower. And then they put the flower. Like I know my, my, um, like a lot of my family members that shop Chanel, they um, keep a lot of the boxes and they keep the little like camellia flowers or even some of the ribbons and they just put it on like they're like, they style it with their clothing. Like those oh, like are- like a pin? Like a pin or yeah. something like that. So it's like, those are little like touch points or little like creative branding things that a lot of designers do. And that could be something that you would want to implement into your own brand that makes you guidelines. stand out that makes you stand out yeah obviously like not do the same thing but like but like research your mm-hmm. competition see how they're presenting their product and do something similar in the way of the experience but what's like do something different like right like chanel gives you the camellia mm-hmm. um dior i think gives you a little charm actually yeah they give you the dior d-i-o-i charm i think so yeah and it's like is it is it like a metal charm or is it like a like a sterling silver type charm or something like that? I think it's like a gold charm. I mean, it probably depends on what season it is. They probably change it up. Yeah. And then I know like jewelry, Lana, which I'm wearing. Oh, Lana, I love Lana. They yeah. do a little like a keychain mm-hmm. that you get when you buy their stuff, which is fun because I'm like, oh, I get this. Right. <laughs> and it's like it's the cool stuff like that that makes you want to keep coming back to them. Yeah, it's like especially since. A lot of stores are still kind of closed right now. And it's like if you, a lot of people are shopping online. So the touch point normally that people would get from a store is when they go to the store, the physical store, and actually meet with the sales associate, you know, get a glass of champagne, have that really great experience, and then see them kind of wrap the product all together. But because we're not going into stores right now because of this pandemic, you want to get the touch points from the actual packaging itself in the box. So that's one of the, you know, one of the key ways a lot of designers, a lot of brands are doing it in order to um, stand out from the crowd. Um, Packaging is one of the top things that you have to really consider because it's expensive. Don't get me wrong. It's super, super expensive. Like I remember I went to, I found this manufacturing down, uh, not downtown in China um, recently actually. And like, um, they were doing like a COVID special where you can get a free sample, but I missed the mic on that one. But um, they were, it's cheaper in China than it is in here, than it is in the United States, I will say. But um, for, let's say you want to do a minimum of like, I don't know, a thousand, thousand pieces, so a thousand boxes. Okay. It was like 2000 something dollars, which is pretty cheap compared to like 8000 if you were to do it in the United States. So I mean, 
may want to consider that too, but just putting it out there. But yeah, it's packaging is super important. And it's one of the things that um, a lot of people don't really think about. Think about. I mean, you don't have to do custom boxes, mm-hmm. which you can always get custom tissue paper, all this custom stuff. No, you don't no. have to do that. Yeah. Obviously, people are going to know you're just starting out yeah. and they're not going to expect that. But in the future. In the future. But even when you're first starting out, like do something. If you're wanting to do luxury, Mm -hmm. I mean, luxury products or even in that bridge. Yeah. um, Which is like contemporary. Yeah. You you need to think about this. You need to think about how you're going to be different. If you're doing fast fashion, then, you know, whatever, do whatever you want. But you can, it could be as simple as just like getting regular white tissue paper, have a regular white Hallmark, you know, garment box, but have like a postcard with your brand on the front Mm -hmm. and then a little like thank you note thank you note at the back even like a sticker that you can put on the um a branded sticker that you put on the tissue paper to like kind of seal it up and then your business card and that's a good experience right there because they you were thoughtful enough to give them a little personalized note thanking them for their purchase Mm -hmm. and you know saying you're able to assist them with anything else you also give them your business card so they can reach out to you personally and they get stickers i mean what's I mean, that's cool. Oh, and then also, like, what we learned at, like, you know, in retail Mm -hmm. is that, you know, if you're planning on doing this for the long term. Yeah. Keep a note of what people are buying. Yeah. And. Oh, yeah. And if you ever have, like, a conversation with them over the phone, if they're calling about something or if you ever meet them, take note of, like, certain things that happened in their life. So when you do a thank you note, you can kind of talk about that and they'll Mm -hmm. be that's an even better experience. experience like yeah. you remembered something about them. They feel special that you're taking the time to write them a note. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. And it's so interesting how like those little things that a lot of, even the bigger brands miss. Like, Oh, for sure. Like there's this company, this online luxury company that's, that's reputable. I'm not going to say their names, but they don't even like every time I go on their like um, Instagram and I look at their like comments, it's all there's always a customer asking a question about their product. Like, oh, my order hasn't been shipped. I haven't gotten any like news about my order. Like I've been trying to contact your customer service. No one has reached out to me. And then they have like a robotic response every single time. And I'm like... How y'all have so much money makes like one of the top retailers in in terms of like online retail and you have your own store, like one store, but you're not your customer service is crap. Like how? Oh, I, I'm going to call out people. Hold on. <laughs> so for speaking of customer service, when you're a luxury brand, customer service is and everything. Important. I don't care if you have all these customers mm-hmm. and you are like Chanel customer service matters. And that's a big part of branding too, because how yes. you, how your messaging conveys to your customer is how they're going to um, feel more comfortable and shop with you again. Even if they're spending $100 and you have customers that are spending $100,000, yeah. you should treat each of them the same. Exactly. I, don't make somebody feel less because they're not, they're still buying your brand. Exactly. Like, it's money going in your pocket. What's yeah. up? Yeah. And so call out to, uh, first off, Ralph and Russo. Ooh. Best customer service I have ever experienced. Mm-hmm. I... Like I had a pair of shoes. I think I've already talked about this. I'll do it real yeah, quick. Yeah. I had a pair of shoes. They turned yellow. Asked them what I could do. They replaced it. Did not expect Wait, that. Wait, they turned yellow. They turned yellow. I and they said it was from the sun. Like the silver part, or like no, no, the- no. The the patent leather turned yellow. It got stained in a lot okay. of things in my closet when I lived in Glendale. I don't know what the hell was going on with that apartment. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I just asked for how you can. Like, can I fix it? And they said no. And they sent me a new pair of shoes. Never Mm. expect that. Fully Mm. expected to pay. They Mm. gave me a brand new pair of shoes. Oh, wow. I got somebody else's shoes in the mail. And I was like, oh, hey, I got somebody else's shoes. Um, And they're like, oh, crap. crap. Something got uh, mixed up. We're so sorry. They sent me a candle to apologize. Dang. I'm like, what? Yeah. Now, Louis Vuitton. Oh. can kiss my ass day <laughs> um so i bought a wallet uh-huh. and it was light pink and my mom and i got in new york and i was so excited two weeks later it discolored it, mm-hmm. it had like this splotchy oh, like, color yeah, yeah, yeah. on it and mm-hmm. i had no idea how it came from i mean I, honestly if i put it next to another patent leather purse or something and it like color transferred i understand i get color transfer we work in the industry yeah we understand what color transfer is so mm-hmm. i went to their store and they said it's color transfer i'm like no it's not 
I don't know what the hell this is, but this isn't color transfer. They wouldn't do anything. They said, no, this is your fault. And I'm like, it's been two weeks. And I did it before like the return policy ended. Okay. So do you think it's just the store? Do you think, do you think it was that specific store? Do you think it's the brand? So Mm -hmm. I called their customer service line, which has like two star ratings online. If you ever look into it, their customer service is terrible. And I spoke to as high up as I could go Uh (laughs) and they were just not having it. They're like, no, this is your fault. And then they had the audacity to tell me if you bought a pair of white sneakers and they like, if they got discolored, would you blame us or yourself? And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I I don't know if that went through my head, but what? <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so um, I said, you have now lost me as a customer and my mother, who has been a customer for 30 years. Uh-huh. And... I can't believe it. I was right. so mad. I tried it. I was like, who else can I go to with this problem? And I knew Emma Emma Stone was like the mm-hmm. spokesperson at the time. Of course, she doesn't have an Instagram. Right. I don't know if she has one now, but I was like, I'm going to reach so, you, were, you were this close to reaching out to Emma Stone I and be like, so mad. like listen, talk Emma, to them. I am little Ariel and I have an issue with your one of your brand representatives. Can you help me? I was so mad. I mean, I know it's only like a $600 purse. They probably thought nothing of it because they have the clientele and they always will have the customers who yeah. will buy into it. Yeah. And they don't care if I like leave. They're like, oh, well, that sucks. They, I, even when I told them, I'm like, all right. Right. They, I don't care. Dang. And I was just like. That's so bad because it's like you would think like I feel like and it's like what you were talking about. It's like regardless of how much you're spending, regardless of how much you like how big of a customer you are, you don't want to create like you don't want to create like a bad taste in the customer's mouth after they shop with you. After they first, if they started shopping with you, like say say if you were like a new customer for Louis Vuitton, like you haven't shopped there before, you got some money. You, oh, I want to spend you know a little bit of money. I want to splurge on myself and buy from them. And then after buying the product and seeing how it's kind of like something it's defective or whatever the case may be and then they treat you like that you're gonna be like dang why did i spend this much money on this company like why did i spend why i could have used that for something totally different instead of spending it on a brand that doesn't really care about me i know and then they they're like well it's patent leather i mean stuff like this happens i'm like i have two patent leather purses from Mm -hmm. you and a wallet from you guys Mm -hmm. You're, that, you're a customer. You're a good customer. Uh, this has never happened before. Right. Mm-hmm. And like even on the lighter colors, my mom has this yellow bag. Mm-hmm. That stuff doesn't happen. Yeah. And now I have this little bag that I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with this? Like it's. Can you sell it? It's discolored. Like nobody's going to want to like, buy is it, that. Is it like a visibly. Yes. Dis- no. Yes. I mean, you can overlook it, but I would not spend money on that. Well, pass it on to me. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm just going to give it away. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll we still use it, but like. Right. So, so. what? So, in, so I wanted to go into more of like the color ways. I know your color ways are more like black and white, but I wanted to know like what. And you know how, like, with Dior, they have, like, the navy. That's kind of, like, their central color. Um, Chanel, obviously, it's black and white. Um, but most designers are black and white for most, their, like, okay. labels. Um, sometimes they'll change it up with their hang tags. Mm-hmm. And they'll use, like, their color. So, Valentino red. Mm-hmm. Or... That may be his. Well, oh. uh, Chris Louboutins, they're like a like a deeper red or like a red orange type color. Yeah. So I guess if you want to be known by that one color, you can do mm-hmm. colors like that. But usually, I don't think a lot of designers focus on that one color. Okay. So they focus they they focus on the black and white, keep it simple, whatever. But also, even with like, because I was looking at like Pepsi, it's like blue, white, and red. It's like. Yeah, I think it's well, mostly blue and white because you see blue and white, but there's red in there too. Yeah. And it's Coca-Cola, white and white and red. Um, it, I, like what, so what kind of goes into the process of creating those branded colors so that way it's recognizable. So if they see like a certain, like, I don't know, like a certain color, it's even like with like, I was going to say like um, Starbucks, like if you see the, if you see that color green, yeah, it's like recognizable. That's different. 
You think? It's really different because they're going by this little logo that usually has like an image mm -hmm. and like Target. I mean, you have the red and the white, like the bullseye. Yeah. And you think, oh, okay, Target. But like with fashion design, your logo is usually like just, your initials. It's a typeface. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's completely different. And you can change the colors depending on the season. Interesting. Okay. So it's essentially like it doesn't... For fashion, it doesn't really matter in that regard. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I I I do see that, but I feel like it would make a lot more sense. I mean, you, you're more than welcome to. I'm yeah. not saying you can't, but like, yeah, yeah. I think I think if you if you feel like you want to have like a distinctive color, I even think that it would enhance your brand a little bit more because for me, for my business, my color is like a mauve pink. Like I have this mauve pink color that I use throughout my entire branding in my newsletter, in my um, it's the it's the color on my um, business cards, my postcards, my sticker. I definitely want to make into a um, I have I definitely want to have a box that that that's the same color, mm -hmm. but I also have I also have m multiple different colors. I have the mauve pink. I have the cerulean blue green color. Um, that goes great with the mauve pink, and I kind of intermix it together in some like in some of the logos that I have that I've created in the past. And um, I also have this like tan color that I use that that's kind of mixed together. So it's like I have like a color story, or not necessarily a color story, but I have like a like different unique colors that kind of make my that I feel like make my brand stand out. Like Ariel said, you don't have to, but I think for me personally, it's essential. So that way people can recognize you a little bit more. But then again, I'm also a retailer. So I mean, branding for designer brands, it could be totally different. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I just feel like you get tired of the color. And True. a lot of designers also do gray because it's yeah. just easy. So Ralph and Russo does gray. Mm -hmm. Neiman Marcus does gray. Mm -hmm. Nordstrom does gray. Like, they'll change it up for the holidays or if they're having a special event. But it's yeah. usually a simple color that can kind of go with anything. That's true. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry too much about the color. Yeah. You should worry more about how you're representing your brand. And mm -hmm. it, it goes with advertising, too. Yeah. Like, you need, if you're going to do luxury, it needs to be luxurious. You yeah. need to see, you need to see what other brands are doing. You need to outreach to people and see mm -hmm. kind of like what grabs them. Yeah. Like, why am I going to spend this much money with you? Exactly. Yeah. And then um, speaking on that, what, like, what do you do in terms of like messaging? Like, how do you, um, how, how do you create the voice in terms of like for social media, for outreach of customers, for I mean obviously you haven't started that yet but like no. what is <laughs> but like just thinking about it now like what do you think is your voice or what is your tone do you feel like in terms of like communication and messaging on all platforms I don't know I'm trying okay. to think redo the question in my head <laughs> I think for me so my voice is obviously so my clothes so the clothes that I have in my store they're very designer contemporary or mostly some of it is like pretty like accessible price point like bridge like she was saying but there are also so are some items that are more like considered in the luxury route luxury route because they're above a thousand dollars or like they have like you know construction is great or like it's you know whatever so my messaging or how i present the brand in terms of like um, newsletters, social media, um, even like the postcards, like what I write in the postcards to customers, it's very like informative, but also very like as think of like a stylist, like a celebrity stylist, like how would they interact with a celebrity? Like they would be, they're very informative on like fashion trends, they're informative on like what's going on in the industry, but they also are very like complimentary to your style. Like they are complimentary to like, if you bought something, say you bought these leather pants that I have in one of my, in my store, um, they're complimenting you in terms of like what you can style with and what, how you can look with it or how you can incorporate it into your wardrobe. So just having that very like sisterly woman or sisterly 
I don't know, character or, pers- or persona to kind of influence you to shop more. Think of it as like if you had a, if you had an older sister, like, and you start shopping with her and she's like, oh my God, that's so cute. You should get that, all that stuff. Like that would, you know, having your older sister telling you like, this looks good on you and you look up to your older sister, that's kind of like the messaging that I kind of want to bring. But also maybe not, maybe not make it too personal, but still have like a, have that like, younger sister, older sister, like communication, if that makes sense. Mm. I don't know if that, I don't know if that you guys understand that, but it's kind of like a, but you'll see it happen. You'll see it happen. Like, (laughs) and and even like, even at like when we were working at Neiman's, it was like, for me, I was the gay best friend when it comes to shopping with customers. It was like, Oh my God, that looks so Mm. cute. Like, Oh my God, that's beautiful on you. Like, obviously if I didn't like it, I'll be like, girl, don't wear that. Don't listen. I'm trying to help you. And it's my name too. Like the gay best friend, Ariel, I don't know like how you kind of presented it to your customers, but I'm, I'm assuming you were probably like the little sis that was like, Oh, let me help. You know what I mean? Obviously we were working with older women, but like, you know, (laughs) or the daughter, I don't know. Like, but I was like the daughter, the daughter, I was like the gay best friend, like just, you know, giving them compliments, showering them with compliments. If I didn't like a, a certain item, I'll be like, girl, don't do that just kind of like that overall person that tells you the real and tells you how to style things that's kind of how i want to mess that's kind of like the messaging that i bring to my brand as well so it's kind of like easier for them to feel comfortable to shop again that's true i feel like i'd want to go more like the funny route the funny route you could do that i feel like that's what i mostly did with my customers was just like play around Mm -hmm. and just make it fun so it's not so serious because I know in design, like even in the design world, it's so serious. It's yeah. like we're not curing cancer here. We're just making clothes. Yeah, we're making clothes, selling stuff, you know. It's just, I mean, yes, it's like, it's an important job. It is. Don't get me wrong. Very I'm not important. like making it seem less than what it is. But like, again, we're not. We're not curing cancer. We're not. <laughs> we're not saving your life. No. If you had a heart attack, we wouldn't know what to do. Like you'd be dressed well, but that's okay. about it. That part. <laughs> okay. I mean, at least you'll go on. At least you'll go out with um, a fashion award, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but I just I I think having that specific voice and that messaging and that um, persona in your branding is what makes it very very important and it makes it a lot makes it very comfortable with everyone else that are shopping with you so if like um if you have someone new and they see your messaging on instagram and all that stuff it's like oh you know it's it's cool it's grown women it's um it's like it's like your own personal stylist but very very chic Think of like a man like Emily in Paris, like how she would talk. Yeah. I feel like Emily in Paris would be your like Emily in the show. Um, I feel like she would be the that would be the voice or the messaging that she would represent really? to the I because I honestly remember when I, t- I told you when we started, I when I watched it, I was like, this is so aerial. <laughs> like the quirky, but like not night, I wouldn't say naive, but like very quirky, very like, oh my god, like you know, I don't know how to explain it. But it's like I know there's like a word, but there's something about her that's not me at all. And I what think what is it? Not her, maybe the assertiveness, like just how she talks to people, like she's better than them in a way. I mean, I know it's like her job, but the way she does it, that is so not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But I feel like the quirkiness, the kitschy, the chic, the the you know young girl in Paris, you know that type of like conversation, that type of vibe. I feel like that's so your. That's yeah. who you would personify. Just like easygoing. Yeah. Fun. Fun. Loves fashion. Yeah. You know, just loves the, you know, the, especially with this girl and her, and she looked like she was like, like 28, 27 or something. And she has Chanel and Dior and all these other like Birkins too. I was like, girl, where? I wish I could afford that. Like, I'm like, where? Unless you got to come from a rich family. But I mean, which you probably did. But in the show, I was just like, dang, she got a bigger closet than I do. Shoot. But even how you represent your store is like a brand. Mm-hmm. So. So, uh, like with Chanel, like they're when you go into a store, like their employees are like elitist. And like, I know, whatever. Like, and I have to admit, like when we were at Neiman Marcus, you mm-hmm. kind of feel that way too. Yeah, you just be like, hmm. I, agree. I mean, it depends on because they work on commission, so yeah, like 
you kind of know who you're going to gravitate towards. But that's awful. Like, you should have fun and play around. And I feel like that's how I was at Neiman's. Mm -hmm. And I was just... I think I think I think with retail, especially with the store, they play on that, you know, the branding of their store. So like Chanel obviously is like the top of the top designer brands that everyone who loves fashion, who enjoys the retail industry wants to work for. Neiman Marcus is one of the tops too, in terms of having in terms of working with a multitude of designer luxury brands and having that luxurious experience. Or providing that luxury experience for your customer. But I feel like if you have all of your employees, I mean, it's still part of your brand. If you have all your employees, like, judging people mm-hmm. and feeling like they're better than them, like, ugh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you don't feel comfortable to shop there. I, I know so many customers came up to me and they're like, like, people are so mean to me. They look down at me. And I'm like, yeah. this is awful. Yeah. I think, and, I, and where do you think that comes from? Why do you think, why do you think the retailers... Because I know for a fact, like, at Neiman's, the retailers, like, or the managers, they didn't care that she did that. And I know for a fact, like, even at Chanel, it's like, they didn't care that she did that, too. That's some, not you, meaning, like, the associates that are working have that attitude. They're always like, oh, if you're, if the customer is not, if you don't think it's a sh- if the customer is shopping or is going to spend as much as you would like, then try to get more customers and work with them and kind of push them off or direct them in a different way. So I've seen that happen. So why do you think some retailers or some brands don't really care that their associates are doing that? I don't know. But even like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like to say a, an experience I had on Rodeo because mm-hmm. I know like my mom hates going to Rodeo because oh, everyone yeah. is Rodeo's so like stuck up. Very. And I remember I had to do a project for school and I had to take a photo of how they had everything displayed. Mm-hmm. And so I was taking a photo at Dolce & Gabbana. Mm-hmm. And remind you, I'm not in sweatpants or I'm like in a nice dress. I have like some heels. Like yeah. I made a day out of it. My friend and I went to go have brunch. So right. I didn't look like trash. Right. And they told me I had to delete the photos on my phone. They were pretty much kicking me out of the store. They're like, they thought I was going to steal some. I'm just taking a photo of a dress. And they thought like maybe I'd steal the design. It's like, honey, if I was going to steal the design, I'd buy the dress. Steal it. Steal it, then give it back to okay. you. I mean, <laughs> like, so then I went to Valentino mm-hmm. and I was like, I have to do a school project. Like, can I take a photo? They were styling the mannequin for me. They were pulling things out. See? I mean, it was such a better experience. And I thought, see, I don't understand what was going on at Dolce & Gabbana. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to. I think it's also, I think it's also people. I Another thing, another thing about branding is your people. Like you have to hire great people that represent who you're trying to who you're trying to sell to. Yeah. If they don't and they have that stuck up attitude, which is why we're talking about, which is why we're talking about the employees because the employees make or break your brand as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And if they have that like attitude that doesn't correlate correlate with who you're trying to, that doesn't correlate with your branding and your experience, then your brand is not going to reach the amount of success that you hope to because you have customer, you have employees that are like deteriorating your brand or like that are not represented in the most, in the highest of light, if that yeah, makes sense. It does. Yeah. So, so the fact that you had a bad experience at Dolce Gabbana and, but you had a great experience at Valentino, which I think Valentino is a lot better than Dolce Gabbana. Yeah, it's and more of that. It's more like luxury. ultra luxury yeah. than Valentino. Like, for like an ultra luxury that does couture, that does all these like big, extravagant gowns and dresses and has dressed multiple people in you know in the celebrity world for them to be like this nice and like be like oh let me help you like that's a representative of a brand that you would want that you feel comfortable going to and don't you you know and don't you want has been going through a lot of stuff it like you know what the Ch- <laughs> talking about china and all that stuff don't, don't, don't nobody want to shop there no more it's, you guys have lost your your zeal <laughs> anyways i mean i still love your product but you guys have lost it all but um, one last thing that I want to definitely talk about when it comes to branding is um, the so when you so when you do all the um, the necessary touch points, so like the postcards, the boxes, the customer service, the employees, retail. What does that look like? What do you what do you in your imagination, what does retail look like to you in terms of creating that similar experience? So I, like, 
so for couture and like luxury brands, they kind of make it like a boutique style. Mm-hmm. So for a retail, make like you, you think, oh, I can't even speak. Right. You're <laughs> speaking of like the store, how it look. Yeah. So I've been well, not I've, I've been to Ely Saab, like mm-hmm. their couture house, and they make it like I don't know how you would explain it, but. It's very boutique but they have, like, a couch that you would sit on, and people mm-hmm. would show you stuff and how things should be worn. They'll mm-hmm. be, like, one-on-one with you. I like that. Yeah. it's. I think it's very, like, personalized. Yes. Like, it's, like, if you reach out to, like, say you're a regular shopper and you reach out to one of the, like, sales associates saying you're coming in for an appointment – they can personalize the experience for you. Yeah. So with luxury brands, even with like more some bridge brands, they personalize those experiences for you to kind of create that um, that kind of, to kind of create that loyalty. Um, because I've in my experience when I've shopped at like you know luxury brands or even like bought certain things like there's all, there's this like amazing amazing experience where it's like oh there's champagne for you or there's like a bottle of water or like soda or juice or whatever i know i when i went to shop at burberry they gave you if i if i wanted like a bottle of water they would give you like a bottle of water or like sparkling or flat and it's like it was out of their own branded bottle and like this big and it was nice and cold and they served it to you on a tray and then they had they had like clothings like different clothes from based on like your style and what you're looking for all stacked up in like a fitting room for you to try on and to like share an experience with a friend if you brought a friend with you or if you want the sales associates to just be there to help you they're there to kind of like show you things and show you different product and um just all around be accessible to your to your um but not yeah Pushy, not pushy. Because I, like you, you shouldn't have to feel obligated when you make an appointment to mm-hmm. buy something. It's mm-hmm. only if you want it. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, if you push them to buy something, they're gonna bring it back. Yeah, and especially I, if it's something that you don't really like. You are kind of hesitant on, and you take it home. And you're like, oh, I really don't like this. Yeah, no. Yeah, but um, and also like I wouldn't just do appointments only. Yeah, I like walk in traffic. Is walk in traffic the is the best. Yeah, yeah. And even with that, even if you do get a walk in traffic, still creating that luxurious experience for them is all about your brand. It's all about your branding touch point as well, yeah. because they may be someone just like you. If you, you know, when you first bought your luxury, like your your um, when you first bought your like chanel bag or whatever like your first chanel bag ever that you bought at chanel boutique the type and you had no prior experience with chanel or whatever the case may be the experience that you had made you want to go back and buy more chanel product i'm I'm assuming so it's like even if so it's like if i walk into like a store that's i don't know about that's you know and i see like the window displays and see like how cute everything looks and i go in just to kind of see what everything is and, and then they embrace me with like you know they're greeting you. They're greeting you. They'll be like, oh, do you want something to drink? Or like, oh, we can pull some things. What are you interested in? And they start pulling items for you. Like just, I didn't even make an appointment. Just going in and just having that experience. Yeah. Like that's going to make me want to come back and shop again and yeah. buy more things for the next season. That's a really, that's actually, honestly like one of the best branding experience. Because if you don't, if you can't afford to do the boxes or the tissue paper yeah. or anything like that. Just the pure customer service, the employees, how they treat customers and that shopping experience is will make will definitely like increase your brand loyalty by a thousand. And do not like overlook the young teenagers too. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they're rowdy, yeah, whatever, get kick them out because right. those are annoying. But they're it, shopping too. But even if they can't afford it. They're still looking, and when they can, they'll come to you. Yeah, or they'll bring mom and dad yes. into the store and be like, "Can I have this?" And yes. most, most of the times, they buy it for them. Yes, Ariel knows that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's it for this podcast. We just wanted to touch a little bit on branding and how we brand ourselves when it comes to our companies, uh, our businesses, and like how you guys. I feel like you guys should brand yourselves when you want to break into this very, very saturated market. It's all about branding. Even if you have the crappiest product, how you brand it is will essentially see, will essentially show how good of a marketer you are. Um, so yeah, that's what we have. So what we have, and um, just want to thank you. <laughs> 
I obviously can't speak today, sorry, but um, I'm John. Ariel. And you can follow us on Instagram, on social media. We're going to keep it in the link or in the description on the podcast. But if you're watching us on YouTube, it will be in the link as well. It will be in the description as well. And like, share, comment. Um, yeah, like, share, comment. I feel like you guys should do something else. Email us. Yeah, if you want like us to touch base on something, if you're going through this, if you want to be on this, you know, reach out. We'll yeah, have you on here. We'll definitely have you on here. Talk about your experiences. That would be cool if they talked about their experiences yeah, on like branding. Yeah, like how you're going and we can answer questions. You can teach us something. I mean, honestly, it's just an open forum. Yeah, very, very open. And we're here to help you guys. We're here as a tool to kind of, you know, show you what... Or what we've done that has worked and what we've seen and what we, cause we both studied fashion. So we've seen a lot of cases or like, well, me case studies and her, like, I don't know what you did, like design. Who knows design. what I did? Right. <laughs> me case studies, her, who knows? <laughs> um, in terms of, in terms of just like, you know, creating our brands and creating a brand and having that under that background and that understanding of how it all works and what's working for these bigger designers and what could work for you yeah. as you build your brand. So yeah, thank you guys so much. Hope you have a lovely week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.